Okay. So let's start. Hi, everyone. Um, we'll talk about SUSE Manager and virtual machines and salt and lots of mixing them together. And you'll see that the salt is pretty good in that recipe. So who am I? I am Cedric Bazdona. I'm in the virtualization team. But as this hoodie is indicating, I used to be in the open office, LibreOffice team, just like Noel over there and uh, Peter that is somewhere around here. Um, it's my second SUSE Labs conference since the, f the first one I had it was in 2012, so quite a, a while ago. So by the time we're already in labs and then back again in the labs. So what we'll see now, so we'll see uh, the context of what I'll be presenting. So why we're going for system manager, what, why we're doing all that. Um, you already had some infos on that yesterday when I asked questions in, in Brent Schroeder's talk, for example, but we'll go in a little bit deep, deeper in that. We'll see also what has been changed so far, how you can leverage salt to create your virtual machines, and what goodness it will bring to you. And we'll see how long the road is still. So the context, let's start into digging into history. So why we're doing that? For years, at every SUSECON, we have been asked for a web tool to manage virtual machines. Um, each of our, of our team leads attending SUSECON and man, manning the booth there, being Jason Douglas or Mike Latimer, Claudio hasn't done it yet, but <laughs> at every, every SUSECON we had that question. At, at every SUSECON we said no, we had nothing. We want something that is between the uh, desktop stuff that is Vert, Vert Manager and the um, huge stuff that is OpenStack. Something in between that kind of competes with VMware for sure, but yeah. <laughs> um, so there are several options. I listed Overt first because that was the obvious one and it has been proposed, uh, I think, seven or so years ago. I, I wasn't in the virtualization team at the time. And um, it has been rejected because product management thought it would compete with, with OpenStack offering. So Overt has been rejected because of that. And we couldn't bring it back again uh, even after. So it's done. There is Zen Orchestra and Proxmox also. Problem with them is that they only support either Zen or KVM. We want something that handles both of them. There's also Kimchi that is using Libvirt behind the scene. Uh, we had some attempt at it, at that one thing, and we present. I presented some efforts, uh, some discoveries I've made on around that at a virtualization team meeting two years ago or so. And right at that time, IBM announced that they dropped Kimchi activity. So since then, there is maybe two, three patches coming here and there, but that's all. So we, dro we, we didn't go further th than that because it's just uh, nonsense to, to start that thing on, on ourselves. And then there was System Manager. Um, Silvio Moyoli, a few years ago, already, already told me we have some uh, virtualization features in System Manager. Okay, so let's see what's in there. And that's in the end the route we, we, we went to. So, first, what is System Manager? Is uh, everyone aware of what it is, what it does? A few of them, a few of you. Um, I promise this is the only marketing slide I have. <laughs> um, so basically, System Manager is a, a web tool, web application that allows you to provision VMs 
um, not, well, VMs, not VMs first, machines. VMs is in, in the package also, but we'll see that later. It also manages patches, um, packages, configuration for you. And you have CVE auditing, for example, and deployment features and all those stuffs. This is the old marketing slide. And this is the new one. I discovered that while preparing the slides, that they introduced a new version of it. And guess what? There's, there are some differences. One of the interesting differences I've seen is the virtualization management in there that wasn't there in the other one. So it looks like they started realizing that there is virtualization. At least customers now can see it. So, how we started? Um, so, it started with complaints, for sure, like it, I told you. Lots and lots of complaints. And uh, since we couldn't get anything, because we needed a use case, we needed a business plan almost, and anything, so we couldn't get anything from upper management to tell, to tell us, go ahead, we need to, to implement this and this and this and this. But as engineering team, we were aware of the, of the problem. So what we did is that uh, I took Hack Week 16 to um, implement the, the virtualization features that were missing in the salt part of System Manager. So we'll see that later, that System Manager already has some virtualization feature in, in the past. And in the salt clients for System, System Manager, they had no support for virtualization at all. So that was the very beginning. And then that left as is. And a few months later, the effort has been revived, and we decided to go in System Manager. And the first demo ever of the whole thing was in May this year. So May this year is, is pretty brand new. It's brand new. And then it took quite a few months before having some mergeable co code because like every demo, it's kind of hacky. There are some things that you can't really release. And so once it's clean and mergeable, then we got a first product in July with Susan Manager 4. And that's where we are, approximately. So now let's see what has been changed. Like I told you, System Manager is man uh, managing machines. They call it systems in System Manager. It comes from Spacewalk. Spacewalk is a pretty old thing coming from Red Hat. And they had their own way of handling systems um, based on some cron tasks and a lot of mess. This is the UI we had before for those kind of systems. The sort systems had the same thing, but you had no action, action possible on them. You could just list the VMs. That's it. Problem with that UI is written with JSPs. So I don't know if you, you guys are aware of um, Java and related technologies. JSPs is pretty old. It's trust-based stuff. Um, the library is um, not updated, and we're even fearing security problems at some point in time. So we are moving at that away, away from that thing. So what changed? This is the new UI that is for salt systems and traditional ones. Um, I'll, I'll say, uh, well, traditional ones will have less than that. Now we have a list that is in React.js, a page that is in React.js that is dynamically refreshed. Before, in the old system, if you didn't install the uh, OSA daemon and the Jabber uh, that communicates over XMPP with System Manager, you create a, a VM, wait for six hours, then the VM is created, and once it's created, you need, a, again, five minutes 
at maximum to get it reported in Suse Manager. With that new UI, with salt, it's almost instantaneous to create a VM. It's just a salt state that is uh, applied, but it will just be queued with the other ones. And then the, the UI is updated in almost instantaneously. So we'll see that how later on. The look is slightly refreshed. We have action buttons on each VMs. We have uh, checkboxes and, and block uh, uh, button buttons to apply the ac actions on several VMs at the, at the same time. And uh, an interesting thing is also this one column, the fourth one with the small screen, will show you um, graphical console like this one. So you have your Spice or VNC client within your web browser in HTML5. Um, this is kind of pretty compl uh, tricky, complex architecture because Spice and VNC, VNC communicate over TCP sockets, and HTML5 needs web sockets. So we needed to have a WebSockify um, daemon somewhere on the system managers. Uh, server that translate between the two. And that comes with all the certificates issues that we can have and the firewall mess and everything. So, what's, where, where is salt in that? So we'll see first one use case. So this is the use case of how the VM list is updated in System Manager. I couldn't get it all into a single picture, so I had to split it in two. So this is one case. First, we get a VM change, a VM state change. For example, a VM created or a VM started. Libvirt will ha has its own event loop and will f trigger an event there. What happened before is that there was a, uh, a some sort of a cron task that run every five minutes and look, ask Libvirt for the state of all VMs and reported it. Now we, had, we created what is called an engine, a salt engine. It's a tiny ever running process. And in that one, we have a callback that is registered on Libvirt, event bus, listens on every event, event that goes on that uh, bus, translate it into a salt event, and sends it over the salt bus. Susan Manager is listening for salt events in any, any, any case, so he'll get the event. And then when he gets the event, it will update the database. And in some cases, like for example, when we create a VM, we need to get some more data in, uh, in Susan Manager that is in the event, like amount of memory, amount of CPUs, so then we will ask Salt to provide us these data. And now, since we have that thing, we have almost instantaneous update of the database in Susan Manager, which, is, which was not the case before. So what happens when you click one of the actions button? In, in that case, you will apply um, a Salt state package with system manager, and that salt state will trigger some uh, salt module in the end, for example, the virt start module, that will call libvirt, and libvirt will do the magic to spawn the VM. By the way, this is working on both Zen and KVM. So, now you, you know all this, this is in the UI. In, in the UI. But what can you do with that? Because you can do with something with that. That's what, we could, what I, I like to call it software-defined virtual machines. So if you're playing uh, buzzword bingo, this is one. We can have some other ones later on. Um, how many of you are aware of how SALT is working and what is SALT? So it's a good thing that we're uh, going a little bit on that. So before going on to the um, virtualization specific stuff, let's have a little stop on salt itself. And states. A state, a salt state typically is 
a YAML file that describes how your system should look like, what, it's, what should be in there. It doesn't tell you install it, install Apache here. It doesn't tell, say install Apache. He says it needs Apache to be installed. So if it's, it's already installed, it's doing it, nothing. If it's not installed, just then install it. In, in that one here, we have install web server, which is uh, typically an ID for uh, the task. Um, can be used later on for referencing. We'll see that later. later. Package is um, um, the name of a special state that is shipped with salt. Package installed is a function in that state. And then we give it the name Apache 2. There are hundreds of states already shipped in, in upstream salt. And, um, well, you can do quite a lot of things with that already. There are several ways to apply that. Well, I mentioned two here. Um, the quick and easy one is to call the salt command. And um, the web dash tar here is a pattern that will match the systems registered. So that will apply the salt command to all these systems. State.apply is just saying apply that state. And the state name is web server. You don't see the name in here because salt will find, will look for the web server.sls file and do what, what's in, in there. Typically, it's what is, contains the small snippet that is above. You also have the possibility to use a top.sls file that has some syntax like this one, is some YAML again. Um, you can use templating, you can use um, grains. Grains are data that are, that are scraped from um, the system by salt. So you can say, if this is distro slash 15 sp1, then do this. If it's uh, another distro, do something else, etc. So it's quite a powerful thing. And uh, for those of you um, that watched the uh, SUSECON sessions, there was a pretty interesting one um, on how the uh, customer was using salt states and SUSE manager to manage their infrastructure. That's what we call GitOps. So you just store the states into a Git repository, and then you can automatically apply that to, um, to your system. So, now the virtualization step. This is just one special state I will show you. So just the um, virtual, virtualization related. This is partly upstream. At least this part is completely upstream. Um, you'll see later on that there are some, some patches ongoing. So this is um, typically describing what we want for a VM, how it should look like. So we have um, the name of the VM, we have the CPU memory uh, in megabytes, the disks, uh, so here there is just one. Um, interesting thing to, ne to note here, the image here is either a local or remote file, and it's just a template image. So that image will be copied to um, a new file to be used for, for the VM. We have the size here that can be uh, used together with the image. Um, and then it's quite tricky because behind the scene it will use libgsfs to virtual size the, uh, the disk. And if you're using a size that is smaller than the, the, the one of the image, it will not do anything. Well, it won't change the image. It's just a little thing to know. So far, we are enforcing pools to, and networks to be used in the, in the definition. Maybe at some point in time we can provide some more things. And the limitation with, with that one is that all of this boils down to parameters in a Python function. And obviously there is not covering the whole possibilities that Livert is offering yet. We'll see that later is kind of Problem sometime. 
the seed parameter here, I just left it here on purpose, is just um, a parameter that tells Sol to initial, initialize the VM with Sol steps again. So, in the same state file, for example, I have a pool definition, storage pool definition. It's typically uh, the same data that you have in a libvirt definition of the pool, but put into YAML. And for that one, it handles approximately all the types that are supported by libvirt. Um, just like it's written, there are fixes that are on the way. Um, I would like I would need to check again because when I written I wrote the slide they were not in our packages maybe they have made it in the meantime networks so this one is a little tricky trickier uh, the problem here is that not all type network types are supported yet bridge network types it's easy that was already supported before I touched anything in, in the uh, virtualization code of, of SALT. Uh, NAT is on the way. The patch has been submitted. Um, it will land sometime. And for the rest, there's nothing yet. Um, here I, I have added some DHCP and IP configuration in that. For the purpose of this talk and for that uh, and the uh, preparation of that session, that session, just because I discovered that without that, I couldn't get a NAT network. So it's kind of a problem. But all the rest of the DNS and uh, IP fine tuning that you can have in, in a libvirt network is not supported yet. Again, it's a Python function that needs to be enhanced and added more parameters and so on. So now we can put that all together. In the VM definition, we could just add a require and saying in the vert, mod the vert module, I want to pool zero and the net zero that we defined just before. And just to remember, this is a small tag just above uh, the ID that we mentioned. So in this way, salt, when applying the state, will run these network and pool states before creating the VM, obviously because we need them. Um, I put the link here um, for a reference for, um, for you if you want to go digging into uh, sort a little bit later on how requisites are working and how it, you can use them. And now, let's bring it to the next level because the, the sort state we had before was pretty simple. We can use templating. You can do templating with Jinja templating here. There are all other renders that you can use for, for salt. Jinja is, a, is just a default. You can have something else. What it will do, for example, here, it will just look for the pillar. Oh, what's the pillar? The pillar in salt is a collection of data that is um, give, uh, given to the minion, the salt minion but it's not stored in some configuration or something. It's, just, it's provided by, by the master. And you can also use the, the pillars to transmit um, password data, secret data, encrypted, and so on. It's a more dynamic configuration way. And then in the pillar, I would assume that have, I have a um, VM name property that will be used to create a VM. Um, I can just say, hey, if there is a VM net in, in that um, pillar, I will assign a network to that VM and create a network at, a, at the same time, and so on and so on. So you can really parameterize that the way you, you want it. Uh, and then once you have that again, you can always store these to state files, because it's just a, a text file, into a git repo, and automate the thing that, so that when there is a change, you apply it. It's just perfect, it makes make sense. 
and it's pretty useful in uh, CI, CD environment or um, stuff like that. By the way, GitOps is yet again a buzzword that you could have to sign in the big bingo. So there is still quite a long road to go to the end of that story, if there is, if there is an end. Um, so first, badly wanted features, what we really want, because so far we just have some tiny, tiny, tiny VM management stuff in a web UI. Of course, if we want to go after VMware or other competitors, we need to be able to handle, to manage storage pools. We need to be able to handle networks, virtual networks. Um, the storage pool is ongoing, ongoing so far. Networks, well, we'll see later. Manpower problem. Um, we also have the problem of VMs creation. So far, we only create VMs from a template image, a QCAL or a raw disk image. Um, we want to have more ways to create VMs. Of course, we understood in the session before that uh, ISOs are dead. Installing from ISOs are dead, but maybe not for everyone. I've been requested to add ISOs plus AutoYast install. Uh, same for Pixie Boot. So far, it's not handled. The problem with Pixie Boot is just one parameter that needs to be added into the salt state, the absolutely vert in its salt state, because I need to change the boot, boot order, which is not implemented yet. Um, one other interesting feature we would like to, to have for surely at some point in time is integration with clustering. For example, if you create a VM on a system that happens to be um, a SLEHA node, maybe you won't have that VM handled by SLEHA in the cluster rather than define it directly via libvirt. So that would provide us all the features, the goodness of, of the, clustering, um, the clustering option. Of course, we also want to have live migration and um, snapshots, and I'm, th I'm pretty sure we could add quite a lot of, of other things to that list, but these ones are the um, really super important stuff we, w we really want. There are challenges, though. It's not so easy. Um, this one is annoying me quite a lot. The problem is to get stuff changed in salt. Technically, it's not that difficult. It's Python code, it's not super complex. Um, you can get pull requests done pretty fast. Problem then is getting the reviews. Upstream reviews are, well, sometimes pretty fast, but these days they're not rather, they're rather slow. Um, some of the pull requests I made were approved, approved in the next few days. Um, some took a month. Could be quite, quite long. And most importantly, no pull request has been merged upstream since July, even though most of them are approved. Um, upstream salt is having some problems stabilizing their test suite at the moment and stabilizing the next version. So I hope this is the reason and that it will be fixed in the next few months or weeks. But it's thought to be annoying. Given the, fa the fact that in the OpenSUSE pa open and SLE packages, we want to have patches that are approved upstream, and even better, merged upstream, it sometimes causes some problems because uh, we need to wait before getting the patches in, in our packages as well. And yeah, it's a big trouble. We had to, to, get, to do some exceptions to that rule. Uh, some of the features I wrote are not even re yet released upstream, approved but merged but not released yet and are already in our packages. 
But that should not happen, theoretically. And then there is another problem, is that salt is not um, in shipped with Susan Manager anymore. It's shipped with SLES. So it's yet another release cycle, different release cycle. So when I worked on the storage pool feature a few months ago already, I discovered that uh, it was too late to get the salt changes I had into sleeve 15 SP1. So that whatever I would have done, I couldn't get the uh, storage pool feature in for Susan Manager 4.0 release because I couldn't get the changes in SLES, typically. So yeah, need to, to juggle with that as well. It's, it's not so easy. And, and then again, I can get some changes in, in, in maintenance updates, but if I need to wait for the maintenance update to be released, to be able to merge my pull request in, in the uh, Uni tree, that can delay by a few months, which is not so, not so simple. So one of the possible solutions is to fork the verse tasks from salt into a uni repository and synchronize with upstream. It takes a lot of work, uh, but that would give us more control on, on what, what it is. <laughs> oh, I was wondering what was this if the 10 minute sign. <laughs> so that is one option. Um, one thing that I, I started doing also, I needed uh, a source state, a Python store source state um, in salt vert modules, and um, couldn't get it fast. So you, you have a way to extend what is shipped by, by salt and provide your own modules this way. So that's what I did is that I provided some additional stuff outside in, in Uni packages that will be uh, shipped together with Uni, but that could be released later on in, in upstream salt. But that can't be done, for example, ex for example, with existing functions. Okay, so this is another challenge. I don't know how many of you are uh, know Luke, Lucky Luke, uh, the comics. In France, it's pretty, pretty well known, but... <laughs> okay, so this is kind of uh, the position of the guy at the end of the story, singing, I'm a poor Lonson cowboy, uh, far, far away from home. Um, typically, I'm the only one guy working on that. Jim here started to help me um, a little bit a few, uh, a few weeks ago, but basically, I'm the only one working on that. And I only have two hands and one brain. So it will be pretty hard to get stuff in fast. And uh, at, the given, at the current rate, I don't think we'll be able to catch up uh, VMware market before a long time. Tessie, and, and obviously I'm doing also QA and documentation, for sure. So that was the end. Maybe you have questions. Just use the microphone. Uh, <coughs> so here comes uh, two questions. Well, the question one is um, uh, about the virtualization management uh, ability. Uh, where I can find the development plan about uh, uh, what, fe what uh, feature will be implemented in next version, which is missing or What's in the to-do list? Um, let me show that. I have some. Um, let's share that thing here. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Which one is that? I have one board here where uh, this is um, an issue, a, bo a project board on, on GitHub on the Spacewalk uh, project. Spacewalk project, uh, SUSE Spacewalk project is, the, is where all the uh, SUSE manager called uh, development is happening. So, so far I'm the only one using that board, but this is more or less what is in the backlog. 
is not priorita prioritized yet, since no one in product management ever give, gave any input on what to do. It's just me that is uh, trying to sort it, sort it out a little bit by urgent stuff and st stuff that could be done easily or not. So that means we don't have a regular plan to describe what will be uh, included in next January's or next version? Not yet. And, and again, since I'm the only one working on that, uh, I try my best to, to fit what I plan to do, but I was planning storage and network mm. management in 4.0, and it didn't make it. Yeah, so so uh, question two is, uh, an impossible or plan to uh, drop the traditional ways for virtualization management? If no, why? Uh, the traditional way, you mean the traditional uh, systems? Oh uh, yeah. Well, um, there's still a lot of customers, in, uh, system manager customers that are still using the traditional systems. Mm. So we can't drop that, although it would be, it, it is a dream. We would like to do it at some point in time. And even here, we have still some feature gaps. For example, the um, um, creating a VM using an Autogast and an ISO is one of the, fe the, the features that is still missing. Yeah. So when we have that, at some point in time, they will be able to say, we want to drop that. But so far, we're not there yet. Other questions? Other than that, thank you. Oh, there, there was a question, a late question. Uh, <laughs> about um, that upstream is slow and you might want to add your stuff in uni, how is it called? Uyuni. Uyuni is the new open source ver uh, uh, upstream of SUSE Manager. I've read it a lot, I can't spell it. So. Um, <laughs> yes, um, I guess these are um, kind of RPs you touch, which have to be, which you might want to look out that you you don't um, diverge with, with mainline, right? Yeah. So this is probably um, yeah, not, uh, yeah. Uh, have to think further. Huh? If, if you implement your own stuff in, in, in uni and, um, Mainline might might diverge. Um, you're getting incompatibilities in in an in a important um, remote RP, right? That's that's the uh, the biggest issue indeed, and um, that's why I said it's a lot of work. Because ideally, if if I fork fork, that will be a, um, in a special namespace like uni underscore vert, and um, ideally, I would like to keep the two of these in synch in synchronization. Even though um, a univert would would get stuff before and uh, more frequently uh, updated than the vert upstream uh, stuff. I have a question that maybe is not really fitting because you're the virtualization guy. Shoot. But Shoot. there is more than just, let's say, virtualization. There are also containers, and we know that there's the Qbird stuff that tries to a certain degree to combine both of that. So your efforts there of managing virtualization machines with SUSE Manager, are they in some regard affected by that? Have you thought about that? Is there some cooperation ongoing, or is it completely something that's not on the table, as uh, I suspect currently for you? Claudio brought the question yesterday, to be honest. And um, there are some ongoing efforts to integrate CASP into Sus with SUSE Manager. Um, so it's pretty well advanced. The SUSE Manager guys are working on that. And I think we could get the Kubert through that way, pretty pretty easy without much work. You can already manage virtual machines in System Manager. You can subscribe, uh, register uh, a virtual machine already. It's just a uh, stalling, stopping, creating, editing that is not 
there yet, really. And if we delegate the um, Kubevert stuff to Kubernetes, then it, it, we just need the CASP integration. But yeah, that is another way. The um, most important question, the, the, um, the thing that would be interesting would be more integration with cloud providers so that you could have a similar UI to create a VM in the cloud and in, the, uh, in your virtual, virtual host. And I've been asked, for example, for Nutanix support. Even though it's not a cloud, ha they have their own APIs, and I can't manage them with the BERT. So how do we do that? It's yet another problem. Other questions? If no, then thank you. <laughs> and if a question pops later on, you can still grab me in the corridors. <laughs>